Next on Worcester News Tonight. Less than two weeks after the city broke ground on Polar Park, one local business owner is adjusting to life outside Kelly Square. Plus, two people are dead following a tragic crash in East Brookfield. A portion of roadway closed for hours as police investigate. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. It's been almost two weeks since the city of Worcester celebrated the groundbreaking of Polar Park. The massive economic development project will see the stadium as well as retail and residential spaces built among Madison Street. But for one local business, there hasn't been much to celebrate since the team announced its move to Worcester. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live from the Canal District with those details. Cam. On a home plate for Polar Park isn't going to be too far from this location. Actually, it's about 200 feet to my left, which means the building behind me has to go. We talked to the former owner of this building, Paul Harrington, and he says at first it's the Red Sox coming to Worcester sounded like a dream come true. But when he realized what it meant for him and his business, his whole perspective changed. It was it was hard. It was hard to leave. What was once the home of Paul's Auto Glass on Madison Street? is now just an empty building. Owner Paul Harrington moved into his new location on Route 20 three weeks ago, but he says he's still in a transition period. I'm still driving to Kelly Square in the morning. Uh, my, my truck is programmed. I have to get probably almost into Kelly Square before I realize uh, I gotta go to Route 20. Harrington had to leave his building after 23 years so the city can build a new home for the Pawtucket Red Sox. Harrington says he was excited when the team announced they were coming to the city, but having to leave Kelly Square changed his feelings. I got to know everybody in the Canal District, good people, and uh, when you're in there, <clears throat> they embrace you, you know, you're part of the family down there. Paul's Auto Glass is one of nearly a dozen properties the city needs for the new AAA ballpark. City manager Ed Augustus says it's never easy to ask someone to move. All the businesses are staying in Worcester at a new location, so... You know, I think at the end of the day, they're going to be in a good position and we're going to have the space that we need to create this unique uh, amenity for the city. Construction of the ballpark and the redevelopment of Kelly Square means two of the city's biggest projects are literally side by side. Both are on a timeline to begin this fall. And Harrington says moving to a new location may be a blessing in disguise. The construction with the Paw Sox and the development of this peanut thing going on, it's going to be an absolute crazy place to be. I'm glad I'm out of there. <laughs> now we talked to the owner of the smoke shop next door and he says he has an idea of where he's going to go when he has to move out of his building on Madison Street within the next month or so. For Paul's Auto Glass, he says business-wise, he really hasn't skipped a beep. What but what will be difficult is when he has to watch the building where he went to work for two decades crumbles to the ground. For Live in Worcester tonight, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. City councilors and residents continue to debate over the idea of clear plastic recycle bags in Worcester. Mayor Joe Petty and councilors Candy Merrill Carlson and Matt Wally showed their support for the bags, saying it was a good start to help make Worcester cleaner. The bags were introduced as a way to curb recyclables flying out of the topless bins. However, councilors Christian King and George Russell disagree, saying there are issues with the cost of the bags and their environmental impact. It's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. If you're telling people what they, you know, what they have to do on their own home. And again, we had 500 complaints on litter in the streets last year. That comes down to about 10 a week. So for 10 a week, we're going to buy 2 million bags a year. It just really, it's something that I don't agree with. Are you about it? The bags, I mean, you throw it in, it might blow it from open top container. The city council had decided to hold the item until next meeting on August 13th. The two people are dead following a crash in East Brookfield. A portion of Route 49 was closed for several hours as police investigated the cause of the crash. The highway was closed between Route 9 and Adams Road. The crash happened around 1130 this morning on the Spencer East Brookfield line. Mass State Police say the crash resulted in ejections and two fatalities. The road is now back open. 
Worcester is known for its fair share of troublesome intersections. Neighbors near Indian Lake say the intersection at Shore Drive has become a nightmare. Tonight, City Council consider moving forward with a major transformation. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. Teresa Cameron lives right next to the Shore Drive intersection in Worcester. She's been here three years and says the road is a nightmare. It's so bad that my husband cannot sleep at night because of the traffic. Traffic is also a big concern because of the proximity to the highway. Peter Cowett uses it to his advantage, drawing stopped cars to his dog father food truck. A lot of people are coming this way. There's even more people coming this way. It feels like... I don't know if it's building up more and more on a regular basis, but it feels like it is. City Councilor Sean Rose says the city has been trying to reconfigure the intersection for years. They've come up with a plan in the last year and a half, which would connect Shore Drive and Drummond Ave in a straight line and install a stoplight. There's not really any um, identifiable markers to suggest who's coming, going, or, or, or uh, what direction people are going, or which speed or rate of speed that people are going. City Council first needs to vote to take the land needed to make the changes. Councilor Rose says nearby organizations have been helpful, giving up land to move the streets. The Bancroft School, the YMCA, the Universalist Church, they've been really fabulous with us and, and working with us to figure out where the land lines end and what they're going to give up to be able to make this happen. Mass DOT would construct the $2.3 million project with state and federal funds. Rose says the project will be worthwhile once completed. So you're going to see really nice big wide sidewalks um, and you're just going to see a direct line. You're going to see more continuity. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Funeral arrangements are underway for fallen Worcester Fire Lieutenant John Kennedy. The 46-year-old passed away on Saturday in a Norwood hospital after falling ill. He was a 21-year veteran of the department. The union is calling the passing of Lieutenant Kennedy a line of duty death. The city of Worcester says his cause of death is still being determined. Calling hours will be held on Wednesday, July 24th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Alfred Roy and Sons Funeral Home on Hamden Street. His funeral will be held on Thursday, July 25th at 10 a.m. in Immaculate Conception Church on Grove Street. Holy Cross and Celtics legend Bob Cousy is set to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And one Worcester City Councilor wants his recognition to go beyond the award. The Hall of Fame basketball player is receiving the award for his work on and off the court, including his involvement with charity and humanitarian causes, helping form the first NBA Players Union and standing up for African American players. City Councilor at Large Matthew Wally says he thinks the city should add a statue commemorating him. I don't know if it's more appropriate to say Worcester adopted Bob Cousy as our own or Bob Cousy adopted Worcester as his own. He's lived in Worcester ever since you know, he graduated from Holy Cross. So I think now receiving that Presidential Medal of Freedom, it would be appropriate to look at how we can honor him publicly in the city of Worcester. Wally believes the statue should be placed outside of the DCU Center. The Mount Carmel Preservation Society isn't giving up hope on their former church. A lawyer representing them in Worcester Superior Court Tuesday is trying to stop demolition. According to the Telegram and Gazette lawyer, Robert Scott filed a preliminary injunction to save the church until legal issues raised in a civil lawsuit filed by the society are resolved. The society says according to a 1947 deed, the state takes back ownership of the church if it no longer is used for religious, educational or recreational purposes. Scott says it means the state must follow the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act. The lawyer for the diocese says the demolition of the church would not prompt a review because a Little League field is still on the property, which would count as recreational use. The judge says he will be giving a written decision at a later date. A foundation raising money to help cure lung cancer stops by the Railers Tavern Tuesday night. Tom Murphy created Barb's Beer in honor of his wife, who was an active runner and lost her fight to the disease. One dollar for the sale of every pint of beer goes to support lung cancer research. Which takes the lives of more women than any other form of cancer and is seriously underfunded and the whole objective is to cure it. The foundation also owns a publishing arm, and his friend Bob Hodge, who also shared Barb's love of running, was there to promote his memoirs, Tales of the Time, A Runner's Story. 
If you're looking for a chance to save money on some purchases, Massachusetts sales tax holiday is back in August. This year's holiday is set for August 17th and 18th. The weekend gives shoppers a chance to make some big ticket purchases without worrying about the usual 6.25 tax cut. Starting this year, you can also enjoy a tax-free meal over the holiday weekend.